Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. In currency exchange and global economics, understanding the difference between the nominal exchange rate and the real effective exchange rate is essential. Many people often confuse these two terms, yet they play distinct roles in evaluating the value of a country's currency. Let's break down what each term means and why they are important, especially when discussing currencies like the Iraqi dinar or other international currencies. The exchange rate, in simple terms, is the price at which one currency can be exchanged for another. It reflects the current market value of a currency in relation to another. For example, if you wanted to exchange US dollars for Iraqi dinars, you would be looking at the exchange rate that determines how much of one currency you get in exchange for the other. Exchange rates fluctuate due to various factors such as political stability, inflation, interest rates, and the overall economic health of a country. This nominal exchange rate is what most people see when they look up currency exchange prices at banks or forex platforms. However, while the exchange rate gives a snapshot of a currency's value against another, it doesn't provide the full picture of a country's economic situation in a global context. This is where the real effective exchange rate, or RER, comes into play. The RER is a more comprehensive measure that evaluates a country's currency relative to a basket of other major currencies. But it doesn't stop there. What sets RER apart is that it adjusts for inflation and takes into account the price of goods and services in different countries. In essence, the RER provides insights into a country's international competitiveness by factoring in how much it costs to produce and consume goods across different nations. Think of it this way. While the nominal exchange rate might tell you the price of one currency against another, the RER dives deeper. It not only looks at the currency's value, but also considers how affordable or expensive goods and services are in a particular country compared to others. This is crucial for businesses and policymakers. For example, if a country's RER is high, it means that its goods and services are relatively expensive on the global market, making it less competitive internationally. Conversely, a lower RER suggests that a country's products are cheaper compared to others, boosting its competitiveness. In the case of Iraq, for example, the country already has a real effective exchange rate in use. This measure is critical for understanding the broader economic environment Iraq operates in, especially in terms of trade and investment. When economists or currency analysts discuss the potential appreciation or depreciation of the Iraqi dinar, they often look at the RER to understand how competitive Iraq's economy is globally. It's important to recognize that RER also helps in determining if a currency is overvalued or undervalued. If a country's currency appears strong on the nominal exchange rate but has a high RER, it could indicate that the currency is overvalued in terms of purchasing power and competitiveness. On the other hand, a low RER could signal that the currency is undervalued, making its goods and services cheaper internationally, which could boost exports. So, while both the exchange rate and the real effective exchange rate are important, the RER provides a much clearer picture of a country's position in the global market. It's not just about how much one currency can be traded for another, it's about the real value of goods and services in the global economy. This makes the RER an invaluable tool for countries, businesses, and investors when evaluating international economic dynamics.